Hi, welcome to today's 30-day practice where we're focusing on the freedom of a good foundation. The foundation could be said wherever your body is touching the ground. So right now, if you're seated with me, please join me here. Your sits bones, the base of the pelvic floor area, your legs and your feet are part of that foundation. When we come into a pose like downward dog, our hands and our feet come into play. When we do standing poses, our feet are definitely part of that. So today we're going to hone in on how to align and how to work our hands and feet to bring freedom through the whole body. So take a comfortable seat. Go ahead and sit up on a folded blanket and prop one foot up. You can do this in any way that's comfortable, but starting with putting your fingers between your toes, press your fingers down into the webbing of the feet. And I like to hold the ankle and do some circular motions around, going a couple rounds in both directions. And start to bring the breath to the forefront of your awareness so that you're aware of breathing in and out through the nose, deepening the breath. Pause with your foot and start to just squeeze the hand into the foot to the best of your ability, pressing your fingers down into the base of the webbing and letting the toes spread and stretch here and then slowly release the fingers out. You can spread the toes a little bit and then pointing the top of the foot, you'll press across the toes, giving a nice stretch there. There's a lot of tension from the heavy shoes we walk around in all the time. You can then release and we'll switch sides. So propping your right leg up, thread your fingers through the toes. And again, you're working your fingers down as best as you can. Hold the ankle with the opposite hand and just do some mobilizing circles here. And it's okay if the foot doesn't move a lot or if it's very mobile on one side and less on the other. What we're building here is awareness of that so we can work with those patterns. Switch the other direction. Opening up the feet because the interconnectedness of the entire body can affect your hamstrings, your posture, your back, all the way up to the upper body. Pause and squeeze the hand into the foot. Give it a little shake. Press the fingers down into the webbing. This is a pretty big stretch on the feet here. And then spread your fingers as you slide them out and just give your foot a little wobble. And now pointing the toes, press across the top of the foot. I'm using my other hand to push forward as this top, foot, top hand pulls back. And release. And now come all the way to standing. You can place anything, any props off to the side. And as you come upright, simply march your legs. Bend your knees high to your chest without thinking about this. And then pause and look down at your feet and see whatever pattern is showing up here. This gives you some idea of some habitual things that might be common in your day-to-day -day positioning. Is one foot more forward or back? Is one foot more turned in or turned out? And now lovingly, without judgment, <laughs> bring your feet so that they're straight ahead, meaning your feet are hip bone distance. If you find the rounded hip points or the aces points, your feet are placed underneath them. And sometimes the toes aren't straight. So if you look at the base of your second toes, align that point across the top of the foot parallel from side to side. That sets you up for good anatomical neutral. Now spread and lift your toes and relax them down and do that three more times. You can take a breath as you hold the toes spreading and lifted in this flexed position. And as you relax them down, try not to drop or collapse the arches of the feet. Let's do one more bonus. When you spread and lift, notice how the arches of the feet, the inner, the outer, and the one that moves from big toe to pinky toe draw up. Can you keep them strong as you relax your toes back down? Good. Now imagine you're, you're stepping through thick, viscous mud. You're going to pull your right heel up and then press it down. Pull the left heel up and just go a few times side to side. Keep the ball of the foot down and the toes down the whole time. And then try lifting both heels up and down a few times. You might need to fix your gaze on one unmoving point for balance. Slightly downcast can be helpful if balance is tricky. Try to track your heels one more time up and down, not letting them go to the sides and relax. Now with your arms, we're gonna draw some big circles, sweep them high, back and around. 
And as you do this, try to stabilize in your pelvis, not letting it thrust forward. Feel your ribs drawing back even as your arms reach up and behind you. One more big stroke like you're swimming through the big ocean. And now next time you inhale, reach up, twist. Bring your left arm in front, right arm back, palms up. Maybe look back or simply look across, but keep your right hip forward. Don't let your hips go for the twist. Inhale back to center, reach up, look up, spread your fingers. Exhale, twist the other way, right arm in front, left arm back. Left hip forward. Inhale back to center, one more time side to side, left arm in front, look back if you can, right hip is forward. Inhale, return and reach up, exhale, right arm in front, looking back. Inhale, reach up, and from here, stay reaching up, bend your knees a little bit and straighten. Go a few times dynamically. Be aware of the inner and outer feet rooted evenly, the toes and the balls of the feet rooted as much as the heels. Your kneecaps tracking over the center of your feet, right over the second and third toe. Look down and just watch. Knees go over the center of the feet. If they're tracking outward, try to bring them in straight ahead. Next time you bend the knees, pause. Reaching your arms up helps you lift your ribs away from your hips. And now hold your left wrist and sway over to the right crescent here. Inhale up, reach up to your hands again. Hold the right wrist, crescent to the left. Feet stay rooted and firm. Reach both arms up, push the floor away to stand tall. Once again, hold the left wrist, sway to the right for crescent. Look up, inhale, lift. Switch and hold the right side, sway left. Feet are heavy and rooted into the ground. Inhale, reach up, and this time, Exhale and fold forward. Now you can have a good look at your toes here. Feel free to bend your knees as much as you might need. You could even put your hands on blocks. Do take a moment to spread and lift your toes. If there are any toes that don't budge or they're hard to move, use your fingers and just one by one stretch them out. Give your feet some love. Try to actively spread the fourth toes and the pinky toes and feel how that fires up and strengthens the outer arch of the foot, squeezes your ankles in, and even put your hands for a moment on your lower shins, push in, but then push your thighs apart. So your feet connect all the way up your legs, and as you push your shins in and resist your thighs apart here, you'll feel a nice release in the outer leg, outer hamstring, even all the way up in the glute area. Bring your hands to your hips, hug your shoulders behind you, take your time, inhale and stand and relax. Make some fists now with your hands. So we're aware of our feet. We're not turning them out. We're holding that good alignment. Now we bring attention to mobilizing the wrist, doing some circles, drawing the hands out to the sides and into the midline, keeping elbows bent. You are just moving at the wrists. Go the other direction. Taking note of what feels free, what feels a little sticky. It's all good. Good, and then relax and shake your hands out as fast as you can. Let your fingers be floppy and free. And then pause, turn your palms forward, fingers up. Spread your fingers wide and simply point your fingers down. Inhale back up and back down. And last time back up. Now weave the fingers to interlace through. Press your palms forward here and reach your arms far away from you. Keeping your arms straight here, draw now the arm bones back. So you plug the shoulders back. From there, inhale, reach the arms to the sky. We're stretching open the shoulders as well as the hands here. Keeping solid groundwork in the feet will affect the whole body being able to open up. Imagine you're holding the sky and you can lift it up just a notch higher. And now sway over, crescent to the right. Look under the left inner arm to the sky. Big breath. Inhale up and switch, leaning left, sway your hips to the right, gaze up, reach through your arms to open the sides of the body here and come back up and exhale, release your arms down by your sides. Now bringing the hands behind you, you can knuckle bump yourself there 
and naturally in that position from the front, the shoulders might try to round forward. So lift the shoulders up towards your ears, plug the shoulders back, you can stay there, or some of you try to point your fingers down, bring the palms together, then turn the fingers into the body and eventually up. For those who can, play with sliding the hands higher up the upper back, maybe mid back, maybe high, maybe stays really low. But everybody, wherever you are, lift the sides, draw the shoulder heads back. If your palms are touching together, try to press them to close down. From here, take a breath, get taller, and as you exhale, track your knees of your toes, bend your knees. Inhale, stand. Exhale, bend and track your knees, keep your heels grounded. Inhale, stand. Two more, sit a little deeper this time. Press the floor away to stand. And one more time, toes are spreading, inner and outer feet are grounded. And now slide your hands down, release it and shake your hands all the way out. Now, as we come to hands and knees, I want you to think your fingers like the sun rays, beam your sunlight out. So every time you come down to the ground, you are strengthening and protecting by how you're spreading your hands and instantly, as if you have little magnets in your finger pads, you plug in. There's a common habit. A lot of people lift the finger pads as soon as you weight bear and that will collapse you in your wrists. So get in the habit of fingerprints, boom, connecting you down. That will do a lot to keep you safe and build strength and give you greater opening. From this position, notice that there's a part of your hand that's popping up off the ground. It's common, the index finger mound will lift. So if it's impossible to get down, just do your best. You're not forcing anything, but you're thinking about getting the entire handprint as if you're making uh, one of those sweet garden stones of your hands pressing firmly across all sides evenly. And then if we look at the hands and rotate them inward, just to feel the contrast here, when the fingers turn in, the shoulders also narrow and turn in. That would affect if we move on to say downward dog, which is up next. And then in contrast, turn your hands out. So thumbs are forward, fingers turn out. That turns the elbows forward. For some that puts you in hypermobility. So here I want you to find a position where your hands are placed as wide as your outer upper shoulders. My fingers are overlapping the mat and index finger is not quite parallel today, but between your piece fingers, between index and middle fingers, an invisible line parallel from hand to hand. This will set you up in a nice anatomical neutral position as we now go to downward dog. Tuck your toes. Shrug your shoulders a little higher to your ears, soften your sternum, and take your next exhale up and back into your dog pose. Walk out your dog a little bit, bending one knee at a time. And you can again, have your feet in line with the hip points, the ACES points. And either pause with straight legs or keeping both legs bent. But do a little meditation, feeling your hands spreading, finger pads rooting. And the more your finger pads root, imagine lifting the base palm of your hand up just a micro bit, not enough to see, but more to feel energetically. That will tone around your wrists. For those who have shoulder tendency, tightness, or injury, this is also very protective for you. One more breath. Come forward into plank pose. This is pretty intense on the body, all this weight bearing. So working the hands here is essential. No part of the hand lifting, finger pads are rooting, very strong grip of the hands. Bring your knees to rest down, turn your sits bones to the sky. Exhale slowly to your belly. Once you're down, point your toes. Without turning your hands, inhale, try to drag yourself a little on the mat, rise up. Cobra Bhujangasana, deep breathing. Take note, is any part of the hand lifting up? Have I lost connection to any part of the hand? Let this be a meditation on the hands. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, back up. Feel your hands pressing down and pulling back instead of pushing forward, which is common. This will engage your triceps and help you anchor your shoulders back 
bringing the back bend across your chest, not your lower back, keeps us safe. On your exhale, lower yourself down. Push all the way up to child's pose from table. Point your toes, you can tuck them. Sit your hips towards your heels. They may not touch all the way. Arms are reaching still straight overhead to the front of the mat. Hands are out to the wide edges of the mat here. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale, come back to table. Soften the sternum, which plugs the shoulders towards the socket, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Now have a look at your feet in downward dog. Make sure your heels are pointing straight back because if the heels turn in or out, that will rotate up the leg and affect your whole spine, especially the lower back area. So how we work the feet matters. Can you spread and lift your toes here so you're more on the ball mounds of the feet? And that's gonna tone across the top of the foot. Notice you'll feel that strengthening. Even as you're reaching your hips up and back, your heels are aspiring downward. They don't have to touch. You're just working with these opposite energies here. With your next inhale, step your right foot halfway up the mat, meaning halfway between your hands and your feet. Turn the right toes to the right. Come onto the outer edge of your left foot. Don't collapse the foot. Keep a strong flex and reach your right arm up to the sky. This is a side plank variation. Here, the weight bearing into the hand, the bottom hand is very important. We have not turned the hand out at all. The wrist, if you look at it, is parallel to the front line of the mat. Fingers are spreading and gripping into the ground. You can take a moment to feel your left shoulder blade move down away from your left ear. And as the foundation of the feet press down, your hips can go a little higher up as you look up. And exhale, bring your right hand down. Step the right foot back, downward dog. Step your left foot halfway up, turn the toes left. And second side, very aware as we build from the foundation up, from the groundwork up as we lift the hips, lean the head and shoulders back a little bit more. Do take a moment to look at your bottom hand. Having it slightly in front of the shoulder is also helpful Wrist crease parallel to the front of the mat, the whole surface of the hand rooting down, gripping down. One more breath. Take the left arm overhead to come back down, downward facing dog. From here, bend your knees, step or try jumping to the top. And as you come to fold at the top, separate your feet hip bone distance apart. If you tend towards flatter feet, you can practice spreading and lifting your toes. After every couple breaths, relax them down, just building heat and awareness and even muscle tone as you alternate back and forth. With your next inhale, step your right leg back into a high lunge. It is helpful here to come on fingertips. The hands as part of the foundation here. Coming higher will give us more room for breath. If you come flat-handed for a moment to contrast, you'll notice the inner body compresses not as much room. So again, rising onto fingertips, look forward. And now any amount, rock your hips back, work towards straightening your front leg, and then exhaling back into a lunge. Do that a few more times. Be unwavering in your feet. So your back heel is like lunge, heel straight up and down. And your fingertips could be straight on the mat or on blocks at any level. Next time you come into the lunge, pause. Step the right foot to meet the left, aware of the feet. How we stand matters. Feet lined up on the same plane. So as your right foot is now next to your left, feet are hip bone distance apart. Take a moment to draw a line across with your fingers, tracking the toes in the horizontal plane, making sure they're level across. One foot's not more in front or behind the other. From here, step your left leg back into a lunge. Look forward. Take a moment to spread and lift your front toes and squeeze the front shin in. Feel your back heel, again, straight up and down. You can look under to see and make sure that's happening because what that foot is doing will affect the whole body. From here, start to rock the hips back and then come back into a lunge a few more times, building heat as we open up, 
the lower body here, the hamstrings, calves, even the feet here. And pausing here in the lunge position. Now lower your back knee down. Turn your left hand slightly to the left, and this is rotating the hand. The palm of the hand could be elevated slightly, and reach your right arm back behind you. I want you to look back and just feel how your hands and your fingers, even though they're the farthest points, are part of your body. You're connecting to the peripheral points. Squeeze your thighs in a little bit. Start to pick up your back foot and point it. If you can, grab a hold of the top of the foot or put a strap around the foot or simply just bend the leg and keep the foot to the sky there. Any amount, pull your heel in towards the outer hip. You can press the toes of your back foot into the hand with a resistance, and that creates very important muscle tone. It's gonna to help us open up the quadricep muscles that we're really getting into here. Make sure you're breathing. Exhale and release. Placing the fingertips back forward, then come flat palm. Let's step back to downward dog. Do you get in the habit of having your hands as wide as your outer shoulders? If you come down to table for a moment, that means if you look at the wrist crease of your hand, the center of that lines up with the outer shoulder. Most people tend to be too narrow in the positioning of the hands. On your next exhale, press back to downward dog again. With your next inhale, step your left leg forward to lunge. Feel free to pick up the foot, the ankle, and bring it forward until you have knee on top of ankle. As you lower your back knee down, squeeze your thighs in, which will build stability. Turn your right hand to the right, a little wider than the mat. Palm is up. This is called ridge tops. Reach your left arm back, look back. Roll your shoulders back. Very aware of the foundation, how you're touching the ground, how that builds the whole pose. Start to lift the back foot and point. If you can, grab the foot with the hand or the strap. Again, if you have a hold with the hand, flex the toes back now. And as you pull the heel closer in any amount, that resistance creates the muscle tone, the muscles contracting while we're stretching. It gives very effective and safe protection while we're opening the body. We're always matching the stretch with strength. With your exhale, release out. Step back to one final downward dog, very aware of your hands today. Inhale, plank pose. You want to make sure your shoulders are not going beyond your wrists. And then either lower your knees or take your time lowering forward and down to pause before you touch all the way down, coming flat. Take your right arm to the side to a uh, T with palm down, and then roll onto the right side of the body. You could stack your legs or step the left foot behind you as you turn your gaze open for a shoulder stretch here. Coming back to the belly, roll to the second side. Left arm opens to a T, palm down, come on the outer left leg, stack or bend the right leg as you even use your right hand in front of you to leverage open. Now we'll go back to the first side, putting a variation, putting the right arm into a cactus, elbow in line with the shoulder as the arm is bent, palm is down, roll onto the outer hip, maybe step the left foot behind you. With gravity here, helping us do a big pectoral stretch, big chest opening, feel the right hand gripping the mat, the right shoulder moving back towards the back plane of your body. Coming back through center, we'll switch sides. So left arm comes into the bent cactus, palm is down. How you work your hand matters. We align with the mechanics of the body to support staying safe and for getting greater opening. And these foundational principles we're doing today, they come with us. When we have days of flowing, moving more quickly, when we go into some more advanced postures, so the beginning material really sets the freedom, the foundation for everything that we do. It's never too late or never uh, too slow to break it back down and get back to basics. 
coming back down onto the belly, reach your hands behind you. And if it's hard to clasp your fingers here, grab a hold of a strap and just separate your hands a little bit apart on the strap. With a big shoulder shrug up and back, inhale, lift your head. So starting with elbows still bent, knuckles can rest on the sacrum, the back of the pelvis, and you can kind of push towards your heels. That lengthens your lower spine. Feel free to stay there or take both hands over to the right waistline, squeeze the elbows behind you, look forward. The feet are down. And then bring your hands over to the left side waist, shoulders hug back, elbows hug together, look forward. You're building back strength as well. And coming back to center to release. As you inhale and press up, go ahead and recline all the way onto your back. Bend your knees and place your feet outer hip distance. This is bridge pose. As you look at your feet, you should only, you can lift your head, only see your pinky toe and your fourth toe. That way your toes are more or less pointing straight to the front narrow edge of the mat. Inhale, press your feet, lift the pelvis up. Either grip the sides of the mat or clasp the hands under you. Feel free to use the strap again. Rock the shoulders underneath you and be sure not to turn your toes out because if they turn out and you get into a more advanced pose like a back bend here, it really can show up in discomfort in the back. So how we work the foundation really, really matters. Take one more breath, ground your feet, ground your shoulders, lift the rest of the body up, and exhale, release the clasp, come down. From here, knock both knees over to the right, take your arms to a T, palms up, windshield wiper. Keep your right leg over to the side, now stack your left leg on top, both knees are bent, turn your head to the left for a simple twist. Stretch out from the center of your sternum through your fingertips, head is looking left, legs are releasing to the right. Inhale, squeeze your legs together to come up, place your feet as wide as the mat, and then exhale, drop your knees over the left. Windshield wiper for a nice breath here, stretching from your hips to your knees. And then stack your right knee on top of your left, knees are bent, you have a 90 degree angle with your shins and your thigh. And you can turn your head to the right as you stretch from your chest through your fingertips. We did lots of good foundational work today. This informs our everyday practice, keeping us safe, helping us get strong. Inhale back to center, hug your legs to your chest, take a moment to close your eyes. Grateful to move the body, grateful to be healthy enough to do this practice today, to know that we have tools to keep ourselves safe, to get stronger every day, to honor right where we are. Stretch yourself out for your relaxation in Shavasana. Give yourself a little wiggle, let everything drop. Commit to taking at least two minutes here to rest, to let the body integrate, to set yourself up for the rest of your day, remembering what matters most to you. Thank you so much for practicing with me today in this foundational freedom practice, essential foundational ways we can set ourselves up or freedom throughout the whole body. Bring it with you into the rest of your day, how you walk, how you stand, how you sit, how you type, etc. Thanks for joining me. Namaste.